Big news coming from LSU. Grambling Southern on the future schedule. Love the move. I think that is a great job for really historic programs coming into Baton Rouge. How did that all come together, Verge? You know, we've been working on this for a long time, Jacob, about really about two years. And, you know, we're going to make the announcement about Southern at the spring game. We're going to make the announcement with Grandma when Coach Ogo up there to receive his award as the coach of the year. And when everything with COVID-19 fell through, then we decided to, uh, you know, just make it all at one time. And we thought this was the best time to do it with what's going on in our country right now, Jacob. And we sat back and said, you know what, this is the first time, you know, we have the opportunity to have HBCU schools, especially from our state, uh, from the SWAT have the opportunity to play in Tiger Stadium. We've played every other school in the state already. And you know, we just thought it was time. And uh, we made the decision, and we, we pulled the plug on, on on the games. And I think that a lot of our listeners realize this, and we talked about it in the first block, and I kind of mentioned it briefly there. These schools have rich traditions when it comes to playing on the football field. I told a story of when I was in San Diego, Charlie Joyner was our receivers coach. He's in the Football Hall of Fame. And I think – People need to realize these schools are proud football tradition schools with great fan bases as well. You know, before integration, they were the best. Uh, Matt, you're right. I mean, you look at the history of, uh, you know, Coach Mumford and the great players from Mel Blunt, Hall of Famer. You look at the, the NFL, the ground, and Coach Eddie Robinson, all the great players he put in the NFL, Willie Johnson, Doug Williams, all those guys. You know, so many Hall of Famers. You're talking about guys who, who have those gold jackets, only 300 of, of them that exist. You know, Groundland Southern has a lot of those players that have those gold jackets. Virg Osbury, Executive Director of External Relations here, joining us on Hanging with Haster. Virg, the question that everybody wants to know, can we expect both bands to show up, and can we expect them to play on the field at halftime? That's part of the contract. <laughs> <laughs> I promise you that. Hey, that was part of that was part of the deal. The band would come, maybe the teams wasn't coming. Okay. <laughs> we, we like that, uh, Verge. I wanted to ask you, um, just in kind of a big picture deal, how much input does the head football coach at LSU, no matter who it's been, you've worked with multiple now, have on scheduling? You know, it's different degrees. And one thing about Coach, he trusts me. You know, he, you know, he and I talk about it a little bit. But on games like this and non-conference games, most coaches really don't care. The Power Five opponents, yeah, we kind of talk about those. We're so far out right now that, you know, when Coach O got the job, I was already 10 years out. So, uh, you know, we'd be talking about games to be doing 2032, 2033, or something like that. Or, or if we move a game around and do something, you know, doing one of our normal scheduled games, then I would talk to him about it. But Coach O doesn't care who he plays. He doesn't care. He doesn't worry about that. You know, he knows he needs one big game. This is LSU. He expects us to play those kind of games. You know, you look at our season this year, you know, really the game that was a turning point in the game that set the tone of the year was the Texas game. You know, after we won that game, we got better each week. So I said, win a national championship. And, you know, win or lose those games early doesn't make a difference. We should do it throughout the conference afterwards. But that game is important to set the tone of your team. Verge, is it a point of emphasis to play those in-state schools? You go back a couple of years, you played Southeastern, you played Northwestern State a year ago. You've got Nichols coming up this year. We've already talked about the Grambling and Southern matchups in the future. Is that something that's very important to LSU to be able to play those in-state opponents? You know, it is. I mean, this is going to change on us right now. You know, with COVID-19 and the way things have changed scheduling, I think it'll be a ch scheduling change. Other than the Power 5 opponent, the big opponent, I think now there's more regional, local scheduling in the area than going, getting teams from way out to come in. I think it's going to save, cut down on costs for everybody. I think that's what all the schools are going to start looking at here with the, the future scheduling going on. And that's the scheduling that will take place also with, uh, with the NC and other sports. So I think there's going to be a change in the model. But, yes, a lot of Louisiana teams will be on there. You know, people always say, well, why do you play STS teams in smaller schools? Well, you got to. I mean, that's what we did. I always tell people, you know, the reason we do this, you know, Jacob, he's a great player yourself. We protect the student athletes, the safety of our student athletes. I'm not going to play Michigan, UCLA, and Syracuse in the same year, you know, unless they change the format. All of us do. So, you know, people say, well, you know, we don't, we don't like to see those games. Well, you know what? We have to, you know, make sure we give our teams a break. The SEC conference is tough enough. And you win the games you're supposed to win. You know, at the end of the year, you'd be having, uh, you know, lifting that, 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 that trophy over your head, like Coach O did at the end of the year. Nobody asks who you play. Just win the, win the games. Verge, there's so much that goes into putting a schedule together. And one question I want to ask you, there's, you say Coach Ogeron doesn't care who he plays. And there are a lot of schools who have, have made that declaration. They're going to play anybody, anywhere, anytime. But for you, is it difficult to get people – power conference, national power type teams to come play in Tiger Stadium, being that 
they that could be putting a loss on their schedule. They could keep them out of something in the postseason. You know, it used to be that way. I think now it's changing. I think we set the format of how you do scheduling. Uh, and bottom line, if you don't play the right games, you're not going to you're not going to get into the you're not getting to the national championship. You're not going to have that opportunity. You're not getting to the playoffs. Look how many teams have been left out lately because of the strength of schedule. You know, you remember a year before last. You know, after we lost to to Texas A&M, after we lost to Florida, those games last year, you know, we were still ranked in the top ten. That was the strength of schedule, our body of work. So it's important to have those type of games on your schedule in the games that you play to keep you up there. If you lose a game, you're still in that top ten and you're fighting for the playoffs. If you don't play those type of games, then no, you're not going to be in the playoff hunt. So I think every AD in the country understands that now. Catching up with Verge Osbury here on Hang with Hester. Verge, a game that we're all paying attention to is that game in Houston on September the 19th against Rice. I know that the Texas governor came out and mentioned right now 25% capacity for only the outdoor stadiums. The retractable roof stadiums are not considered outdoor stadiums. Is that something they are paying attention to closely to see exactly where the fan capacity would be in that game? You know, we're not we're not doing that yet. We're going to wait. Let's give it a month. Uh, but the bottom line, right now, it's too early to say anything, what you're going to do. Uh, you know, with State Louisiana got moving in phase two. I think Texas is already close to phase two. But, you know, when you get closer to game time, I think a lot of change, things are going to change. We really don't know what's happening right now, okay? You know, we're just taking the information from the doctors and the, and the scientists. But at the same time, though, we can't tell you right now what's going to be in a month. You know, will there be a vaccine? Will there be something out there that could help, you know, people who catch the virus? And, you know, and – People say it could be from two months to 18 months. So we don't know. So let's get out of the month of June and I'll come back and talk on your show and let's see where we are. I know, Verge, we got players coming back to campus. I know that is the first step, and you're exactly right. We've still got some time before we kick it off in uh, September against UTSA. Verge, you're the man. I appreciate you hopping on with us, giving us a couple minutes. Thank you. I appreciate it, my friend.